Good day and welcome to the program Agriculture on the Move. My name is Philip Sidney. Today I have a very, very special guest. He is the former Minister for Health, also former Minister for National Security, and of course he was the parliamentary rep for ancillary canneries. And I refer to you, to you Dr. Keith Mondesi, who is a farmer. Welcome, sir, to the program. Thank you very much for having me here today. Yes, I always refer to, refer to him as Mondesi because he, 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 he's so passionate about agriculture and um, he speaks a lot about it. So he wants to see, you know, things happening in this country. And of course, Mondesi, I am so pleased that you're here today because I, am, I used to be your extension officer some years ago and uh, I, we worked together to ensuring that your, your farm got to a certain level. Um, but before we get to that farm, I know you um, lived in Canada for a little while. Uh, you worked there. Um, what gave you that passion to come back to St. Lucia to get into agriculture? Well, from the time I immigrated to Canada, I immigrated to Canada for one reason, was to educate myself. And when I'd done that, I'd served the country well. I have always been involved in agriculture in Canada. I used to operate four offices in Canada, four practices, because my profession is I'm an optometrist, an eye doctor. Mm -hmm. And I found time for agriculture. I would wake up five in the morning to go and feed my animals, because I lived on a five-acre plot. And I had sheep, goats, horses. I went into cattle on a big way in Canada. And that was just my passion. The reason, I think, is because I was brought up with my father. My father was a farmer. My, farmer edu my father educated 11 of us. I have 10 brothers, 9 brothers, myself and my sister, one sister. And we were all educated off a farm. I saw my father day after day with agriculturists like Ira Dove, like Cuthbert Henry, like um, Gregor, Gregor Mason, Mason. Mm -hmm. they were always on my father's farm. Because my father, although he did not go to college, but he had a lot of things you call common sense. Mm -hmm. And he always used to tell us, common sense exists before book sense. <laughs> so I took that, and that was in, that's been in my blood. And I took it over, and up to now it's in my blood. Mm -hmm. And I found it a very, very interesting and health-oriented retirement thing to do. Okay. So in my semi-retirement, I took on to agriculture. The first thing I bought when I came back to St. Lucia was, my, was the farm. I bought two farms and I joined them together. So agriculture is in my blood. Mm -hmm. And one of the things with agriculture, for anybody that's educated, it offers me everything that I learned at university. I did botany at university. I did zoology at university. I did microbiology at university. I did pharmacology at university. And now, and genetic engineering. Mm -hmm. And now I am practicing all that I learned at university in the books at that time. Right now, I'm doing it practically. And all this knowledge comes back to me a lot of times. Mm -hmm. I refer to my books up to now on my farm, mm -hmm. especially in microbiology. Mm -hmm. I, I know you're well, your farm is well diverse. I know you're into livestock, I know you're into piggery, you are into um, your, 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 your dairy, you're also into um, vegetable production. I know you've grown a lot of high-end crops like the cauliflower and broccoli. Tell us about your farm presently. Well, I have a very diverse farm. I move both in livestock. My livestock comprises of cows, sheep, goats, pigs, rabbits, and fish. Mm -hmm. I have all of that. And then I grow every single crop that is available. I grow cauliflower, I grow broccoli, I'm into pineapples, bananas, plantain, yams, watermelon, dashing, tanya. 
Everything that we eat here, I grow it in there. Cabbage, I grow carrots. I just grow everything. I just love growing things. I just love to see things grow. Okay. From a business standpoint, because agriculture is, is a business, um, how do you approach your, 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 the scheduling of your activities on your farm from a marketing standpoint? For instance, I'll tell you livestock. Livestock, for instance, when you go into pigs, mm -hmm. for instance, you have to be very scientific. First of all, you have to have a sow that will give you above 10 every litter, mm -hmm. or just about. 10 is the breaking point. If, you pro if you're producing pigs commercially, if you can't save or you can't have a sow giving you 10 pigs most of the time, then you, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. You have to do it scientifically. You have to make sure you have a production that's giving you two and a half liters every year. That sow has to give you two and a half liters every year. Mm -hmm. And you have to genetically control the breeding stock. If I have a, a sow that cannot give me about 10 or even more, three times I sell it out. Mm -hmm. So when you're doing it, you have to look at the sow. When you're selecting the sows, you have to select the mothers that are giving you a lot, and you have to select the, the boars too. Mm -hmm. And you do that in every animal. Now, I learned in Canada that when you're looking at pedigree animals, don't look at anything. You have to look at the ratio of the, the leg to the shoulder. But also, in the male, you have to look at the size of the testicles. Mm -hmm. The size of the testicles gives you a lot of the breeding kind of stock you're going to get. Mm -hmm. so, so here again, I'm using genetic engineering. Now, also, even on my cows, I'll show you, I have bulls that are pretty close to 2,000 pounds. Wow. But you can walk and touch it. Never been in a rope. Wow. If you train them, if people will tell you, my animals, I have three words I give to my workers. In, out, stop. Don't talk to them more than that. Mm -hmm. So when you say in, they know they have to go into the fence. Out, they're coming out of the fence. When you say stop, they have to stop. So I let my workers talk to these animals. And when I'm breeding, if I have an animal, like a cow, it's, it's, it's very irity, mm -hmm. I wouldn't breed it. I would sell it. Okay. So you have to do the genetic engineering to be able to control it. Because these are big animals. Mm -hmm. And the number of them that I have, if they break loose, when they break loose, and you can't control it, Trouble. You're in big trouble. Okay. Okay. So, for the livestock, I do that. Now, with my vegetables, you need... One of the things I found is that we are lacking in St. Lucia is soil testing mm -hmm. to know the type of fertilizer. So, I, too, do a lot, and I teach my guys a fungus, what a fungus is, what you look on the leaf of the fungus. Mm -hmm. So, these are the things. So, I do crop rotation. I will not use... If I plant watermelons in this plot today... Mm -hmm. The next time I'm putting something like carrots, I'm putting another plant. Mm. Then I leave it to hollow. Maybe uh, six months or a year, I don't plant anything. So I do it in a very scientific way. But yet, you must let your workers understand what you're doing. And these days, when you see the run on the estate, they pull a leaf. Doc, doc, me, 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 doc, any fungus. <laughs> <laughs> so you yeah. must educate the people you work with yeah. and you must do it very scientific as much as you can mm -hmm. you must do it scientifically as mm -hmm. much as you can the only problem we have is marketing yep. we don't have the marketing it is not controlled we don't have access for instance you go to 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 Magaje, they will tell you to grow this mm -hmm. when the time comes they tell you they have enough because mm -hmm. they've imported enough they imported more than the they, they, they never remember you. So yeah. there's no kind of recording as to what's in the field okay. and when the importers very, should import very and not point. import. Very important point. That's hold, the hold, hold that point because we do for our first break. You're watching Agriculture on the Move. Stay tuned. We'll be back soon. For effective chemical treatment of Black Sigatoka, practice routine preventative maintenance of all tools and equipment, especially the mist blower, to ensure proper functioning. Clean sprayer after use and service the machine regularly as recommended by the manufacturer. Whenever you are using pesticides to control black cigatoka disease, personal protection and safety measures must be followed. Spray operators must always wear proper protective gear. Before or when handling pesticides, put on your overalls, respirator, goggles, boots, and gloves 
to avoid contact with the skin, inhalation, and ingestion of pesticides. For more information on how to treat and control black cigatoga on your farm or in your backyard garden, contact the Black Cigatoga Management Unit at 451-5091, 451-5894, or email bpmu at cendw.lc. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Agriculture in collaboration with the International Cooperation and Development Fund of the Republic of China on Taiwan. Welcome back. Doc, marketing. Every, from, a, from an agricultural standpoint, everything is market driven. I mean, it makes no sense you planting any crop and you do not know where you would sell that crop. Okay, so it's market driven. How do you see the marketing um, component in St. Lucia? How do you see it working? Is it working right? What solution do you have for this? The marketing is not working right at all. The marketing is very, 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 very sloppy in St. Lucia. First of all, what is most essential, you must have governments and the people to understand that the importance of agriculture. If you understand the importance of agriculture to a people, then the government must have a policy mm -hmm. and a policy paper that directs them over a projected 10 to 20 years. That is what you have to start off. And that is the onus of government. Mm -hmm. The next thing is this. You have to find out what is the economic benefit of pushing agriculture. If it was not beneficial, America, Canada, Europe would not say that's their first industry. Mm -hmm. They all have oil in the ground. They have steel. They have all kinds of minerals. But agriculture is their prime industry. Mm -hmm. If you feed your people, your people will be healthy. You'll have a healthy nation. The second thing is this. If you have a glut of any food crop, you have to have a plan for the excess. Mm -hmm. Also, when it's plentiful, your people buy food cheap. If your people buy food cheap, it's a double whammy. The government benefits because the government now don't have people crying on them. Food is too expensive. Mm -hmm. The consumer, he's still making profit. He may not make the big profit that he used to make. Not the consumer, I mean the, the wholesaler. Mm -hmm. But he's making money. Mm -hmm. And the whole idea is to have your people healthy and affordable food affordable to them. Mm -hmm. The marketing there, so the government has to start and say, how do I market what the farmers are planting? What is wrong in St. Lucia now with the marketing is the marketing board. The marketing board is very essential to the entire population more so to the farmers. For it to work in an island as small as this, it, even in the big countries, there should be a central buying area and a central selling area. And that is the marketing board, should be the central body. Unless the government recognizes that, you are putting up a war when Mega J buying their own, Glass buying his own, this one buying their own. At the end of the day, the farmer suffers mm -hmm. because everybody is bidding for the lowest thing because the, the, the business is profit. The government has that responsibility to the nation and the farmers to protect that. Mm -hmm. If you organize that properly, you have proper storage because vegetables and all these things are seasonal. What happens in the big countries? You have refrigeration. It is stored. When it is in plentiful, everybody gets it cheap. When it is not plentiful, you sell it at a higher price. And then in that way, you are able to give it a stable price for the farmer. The farmer's duty should be producing. The government and the, part, the, the statutory body or whatever is controlling the marketing board should be on marketing and selling the product. Do you think at this juncture, um, that can work in, in the sense that you have so many other agencies importing stuff. Uh, you don't think marketing board, the government has, has taken a decision um, to go into a, a, a PPP arrangement with marketing board. Do you think that's a, a, a good arrangement? It may not be a bad arrangement, but I would never go into a thing like that without looking at it. I'll show you how it works. Mm -hmm. 
You're not inventing any wheel. And I'm not even giving any suggestion that's not. Go to Canada and America. Everything is a wheat board, a this board, a marketing, and that board. So this is already controlled. In all these countries, it's working. Now, the wheat board I know in Canada, where I lived, and in America, the same. All farmers are members of the wheat board, right? Now, if a farmer chooses to go out and sell his wheat because he got a deal once to, to America, they allow him to do it. But when he's coming back to the marketing board, it will be hard for him to sell back to the Canadian marketing board. So you keep all of them very faithful, mm -hmm. and you send the price. So this is not new. It works. Okay. The next thing is that if you go online and look at peak of Manitoba, this is a, corporate, a corporation that started from farmers, what we call marketing, the, the market gardeners. Mm. If you don't have 1,000 acres, 500 acres in places like Canada, market, um, farming is not very profitable. So you go into what you call market garden, you go into vegetables. Mm -hmm. They formed that corporation. The government of Manitoba, what they did, they recognized that the sole distributor and buyer should be peak for Manitoba for all the restaurants and all the grocery stores. Mm -hmm. they, they went and put legislation that peak will be the distributor. Whereas at that time, they were buying from California. California was the breadbasket of the world, right? So what they did, they said legislation that they are the, pro, the prime buyer and retailer and sell in wholesale. They put a law locally as Manitoba, not as Canada, not as Canada and they allow the peak board to order anything that the restaurants or the grocery stores wanted into them and sold it to them. Okay. So it is controlled. Okay? And because you cannot have farmers telling them to, to, tomorrow you put in a law and tomorrow they're going, to, they're going to have all these fruits available and all these vegetables available. Uh, so this has worked. And if you go online now, peak is now selling to, Canada, to, to California. Okay. So this is a simple thing. Okay. And unless this happens now with this marketing board, it can never work mm -hmm. on a small market like this okay. with, with Mega J fighting in one way. This one fighting the other way, and the farmers in the world have been rubbed off their, 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 their sweat. Okay. So it is simple. It is not inventing wheel. Mm -hmm. it worked in America. It's working in America. Mm -hmm. it's, and as a matter of fact, America is even worse. Anything the farmer plants in Canada, do, if, they, if they have too much milk, the government buys it mm -hmm. and distributes it to the schools and uh, the prisons, hospitals. In America, go to Brooklyn. This, you see them giving cheese away, they're giving potatoes away, they're giving all these things away to, to blacks and poor people in Brooklyn. So we are not inventing any wheel. Mm -hmm. It is straight common sense. And I cannot understand. It behooves me to, uh, that the Ministry of Agriculture cannot recognize that you cannot have on a small market like this, the marketing board fighting with a big enterprise like, as far as I'm concerned, Massey should never be the one doing what they're doing now. It should be the Ministry of Agriculture. <laughs> So we've been deprived of the work, and I'm saying somebody in the Ministry of Agriculture, starting from the, the minister, are not doing their work. Yeah. How could you have mercy? Hold that point there. We go for a break. We'll, we'll continue that discussion. We'll do for a second break. Stay tuned. What's yeah. in the food you're eating? Do you really even know? All the chemicals and hormones used to accelerate their growth. All the artificial flavoring, sweeteners and colors too. We consume and we don't spare a thought for the damage that they'll do. The that no, they do. think about the children. Think about the children. How will we save them? Chemicals and GMOs are not the solution. Use organic and join. Excessive agrochemical use, additives, and genetically modified foods are harmful to health and the environment. Join the good food revolution. Grow, buy, and consume organic. A message from Rye St. Lucia and the Ministry of Sustainable Development with funding from the GEF Small Grants Program, UNDP. The good food revolution. Welcome back. We are on our final um, segment, eh? there, there, there's nothing yet as such. <laughs> Let me tell you, let's go, let's go look, look at our, 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 our food import bill. Monday, that's high. I mean, um, I've not gotten the breakdown for last year uh, as such, but I can tell you um, crops that can grow easily here, cabbage, tomatoes, you know, sweet pepper, 
We are importing these things. I mean, we're importing $1.6 million worth of cabbage. In Millet, when you go in, uh, in Durando and go on one side of the hill, cabbage is, is grown. So why is it that we have to, we have to import, in, import, import these crops? The reason why is because, one, the Ministry of Agriculture needs to be revamped, reorganized, and restructured. Mm. They are not coordinated with the, the people on, in the fields. They are not coordinated with that. They do not know accurate enough what is the production, where the, when the production will be due, so that they can now instruct the Ministry of Agriculture from giving licenses to all these people that are importing things when you have it on the ground. I'm a typical example of this. Mm. We have pork. I have any amount of pork now. The, 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 the wholesalers are importing an inferior pork, which is filled with steroids and all kinds of antibiotics in the pigs there. And we have pigs here. We can sell it because we are not organized. The production time, we are high in production now. I have to scale back on my production because we are not getting the market, we are importing too much. And it's the government's responsibility to monitor that and restrict that. Yeah, that is not restricted in a very orderly way. Yeah, but, but so that. with the vegetables, it's the same thing. We are not coordinated on the ground to know what the, plant is, the, the farmers are planting. They have not coordinated to say, well, this area is growing cabbages better than this area. Let us encourage the farmers in that area to grow cabbage alone. Mm -hmm. Everybody growing everything. And sometimes the soil, the conditions in areas are not suitable for cabbage, but very suitable for cauliflower. Yeah, but you, you are right, sir. But I, I'll tell you one thing. Is far, okay, you have the pork farmers. Have you all come together, right, and put something in place so that you all can get the Ministry of Agriculture on their tools to do what you think that is right? That's number one. I'll also tell you, the farmers out there, they decide to plant what they want. You cannot tell them what, what to plant. No. The ministry has an a, 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 a import substitution program in place. Not now. You will go and tell that farmer to plant cabbage because of his ecological zone. He decides to plant something else. He, he, he will not listen to the accession officer. What do you do in, in, in that regard? Let me tell you. If you have a record, mm -hmm. and you have to start the record, of them, them you, you showing that when you have given advice, mm -hmm. it has been followed through. I know of a guy in Venus, mm -hmm. okay? He planted acres of cabbage. Mm -hmm. A contract was given to him, not, not written, but told to him, go and plant. When he came to start selling, the same enterprise told him that they have enough already. All that was rotten. So the minister, let me tell you, you, need, you have farmers that are not highly educated. Mm -hmm. the, the purpose of government is to lead and to instruct and people will follow. But if you are not an example, and when you say something, it doesn't come through, people lose confidence in you. And that is what we have now with the Ministry of Agriculture. The, the farmers have lost the confidence. So you have to build that confidence back. You have to make sure you're doing your work. When you tell them you're going to sell bananas, that they will sell the bananas. Mm -hmm. You cannot tell them they'll sell When you reach there, you give them another story. So you have to be responsible as the Ministry of Agriculture. Now, the Ministry of Agriculture is the guiding light and they are the ones who set the examples and i'm going to tell you one thing mm -hmm. every man knows his pocket mm -hmm. if i tell you go and plant something and you lost your money mm -hmm. you will not do it a second time mm -hmm. you understand so we must not say the farmers we have uneducated farmers we have bounce and draw farmers mm -hmm. they they get the money today tomorrow they spend it you have to understand your people and you work around the mentality of your people but you will get them there the minister of Technology. marcus gavi recognizes what was happening mm -hmm. when Marcus Gavi decided to buy ships, let black people put their money in and buy ships and start doing what the white man was doing. Mm -hmm. So we need, we, 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 we are not, we are blaming the little farmers when we know we have bounce and draw farmers. 50% of the farmers in St. Lucia don't own the land that they, they farm on. Mm -hmm. And we have a policy whereby when we have farmers that are farming properly, government refused to assist them. They, assist, they say they're assisting people. You're making the people poorer. No, I mean, they're, they're, they're yeah, they never assist. They never put the money where the farmers, to, for the, uh, the, the yeah, other farmers to walk in, yeah, the give them the incentives yeah. to walk in and yeah. see what a farm is yeah, like. There are incentives. So, they, incentives so we, are, we, we have to structure the Ministry of Agriculture, starting from top to bottom. Mm -hmm. And we need a leader in there mm -hmm. that understands the, 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 the flight of the farmer, know the type of farmer, 
uneducated, mm -hmm. not sophisticated, but very educated in common sense. Mm -hmm. So we need to know our people. When we understand the mentality, we can guide the mentality. Do we, we do it with politics. They have taken a decision. We do it with eh? politics so we can do it with farming. But here it is. They're taking a decision, all right, to grow seven crops. The crops that we can grow well to avoid, again, to cut down on our food import bill, right? And you, is that a good move? Of course it is a good move. Mm -hmm. But it has to be structured from the top. It has to be, you have to find out who's given the seedlings. Mm -hmm how the land is being prepared, and have your, your field people monitor these things almost every other day or daily, right. and get it going. Mm -hmm. And you cannot take everybody one time, but you take a number of people you know that will be successful in it, mm -hmm. and now you make it an example. I have been to Monjimi and watched them grow Irish potatoes, or what we call Irish white, potato, white potato, white yeah. potatoes, mm -hmm. right? I took my time and went up there, right up Monjimi. Mm -hmm. So you, 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 it is, the, the, in my opinion, the ministry is not doing their work. The ministry doesn't have an organization. They do not have a direction. They do not have an aim. And they do not understand the type of farmers that they're dealing with. And when they give the aid, mm -hmm. they do not follow the aid to the end. They just get us, go and take fertilizer. They don't know where the fellows are putting the fertilizer. I disagree with you there. Well, I, I, I disagree with that's you. That's what is in the field. I, 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 be, I know. I you need know, more work. A I lot more work to yeah, be done. But I, I know the ministry, they have a work program. The extension may not be the best, I, I, would say, I would say to you. Why not how, the best? How, how, however, at this juncture, I know the things are being put in place to ensure okay. that the farmer gets a very good service. But I'm happy that if, yes. they've, if, they've, if they've now come to their senses mm -hmm. and are doing these kind of things, mm -hmm. and you have to follow, that problem with them, they don't follow up to the end. Mm -hmm. They start, and, they, and sometimes they give the thing to the wrong people. Mm -hmm. If you're giving something to a person, you know he's already he's, 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 he's paralyzed. Mm -hmm. You help him with a wheelchair, you help him with that, mm -hmm. and you, you give more assistance to him. Mm -hmm. So the thing is not properly, so that's why the money is badly spent. You have an, an, a, a ministry, the Ministry of Agriculture has the most educated people in every other ministry than any other, than any other ministry. Mm -hmm. Why are we not the best? Why is Barbados mm -hmm. with no land? You can hardly find a river. Mm -hmm. They're self-sufficient in pork. They are self-sufficient in poultry. They are, they are self-sufficient in dairy, and they have they have the pop, half the size of Saint Lucia. They are selling right now as we speak. They are selling vegetables to the cruise ships. So why are we not doing the same thing? You have to ask yourself, what is happening? And they keep excusing on that WTO. This morning on CNN, they say they have to scrap that because the small poor, the poor countries are hanging on that. And everything they do is on that. <laughs> and the people over there don't care about what they do here. You think a country will tell you to help your own farmers to be self-sufficient in pork before you order, mm -hmm. that they will be against you? Sure, yes, yes. This I, has I been used, I, the, I, I, the, I, the I, Ministry I, of Agriculture I, has used that I, stupidness I, I, and have fooled the people all the time. You can only fool the people some of the time, but not all the time. Final words from you, sir. Well, I would like to see the Ministry of Agriculture take on the responsibility, because I'm a strong believer in agriculture. And this is why right now I'm focused in agriculture more than I'm focused in my own profession mm -hmm. because I've practiced my profession for 30 years mm -hmm. over. So now um, it, is not, it is something that I'd like to see the Ministry of Agriculture do things in a structural way, understand what is happening, and now pay more attention to all these markets that are out there. We have markets. For instance, the banana industry. That is the look at the development of St. Lucia under the banana industry. They should have banana industry into three phases. One phase towards exporting to Europe, another phase to the, to the local and market, I'll and another phase, we, we another end phase end for <laughs> animal feed. St. <laughs> Vincent okay. is producing yeah, banana know. supplement as an animal feed, which I feed to we my animals. We, we, we get so there. we need to structure, we need to get realistic, and we need to get the I will bring you back. I'll approach. bring you back again for, for, for a, a part two but of the program. I, told you I, that I really want to thank you for being here, yes. Doc. And I'm looking forward again for you coming back here because I know you're passionate about, what, about agriculture. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, of course, I'm sure the, min the people are watching, um, the ministry is watching, and I'm sure they will take it. So thank you for being here again. Yeah. Until then, I would like to invite you again for second phase. You've been watching Agriculture on the Move. I'd like to thank you, the viewers, for viewing the program. Uh, as you know, I was speaking with um, Dr. Keith Mondesi, who is a, a true farmer, a passionate farmer, and, of course, Please continue to watch this program 
I'm Philip Sidney saying goodbye and see you again. Thank you, comrade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Agriculture on the move. Agriculture on the move, man. Agriculture on the move. Agriculture on the move, man. Agriculture on the move. Agriculture on the move, man. Agriculture on the move, man.